All right, I got another new puzzle type for you again today. This one is called a cave puzzle. Um, and the idea here uh, is that you're creating uh, an area that's shaded that's called the cave. Um, and around the cave is going to be the cave wall. Uh, it's also called, I think it was originally called a bag puzzle. It's been turned into what's called a cave puzzle now. Same thing. Um, sometimes people think of it as a loop. You're drawing a, a loop around the edges of the cave. Um, but it's all the same puzzle. Uh, most people think of it as a shading puzzle now. Uh, and there's a couple of rules that you need to be aware of. Um, the cave, which is marked green on this site, we're using puzz.link again today, by the way, same site we use for the ice loam. Um, this is another one that I think is easier to do online, but feel free to do it pencil and paper if you want to. Um, so it's green for cave and black for the walls or not cave, however you want to look at it. But the green cells, the cave, has to all be one region. So you can't have this and then have some more up here and have black in between. Um, like that. You can't do that because you'd have two caves. You can only have one cave. Um, if it was connected like this, then you'd be okay. So the black... The, the walls can go clear through the middle, and that's all right, as long as the green cells are all connected to each other somehow. Um, and also, uh, and this is where, this, this second rule is kind of where the loop version of it sort of makes a little more sense, but you can't have um, a bunch of cave cells here and then have some walls in the middle because you would be creating a, sec a second loop, essentially. You've got a loop that's around the outside of the cave and a second loop that's around this wall on the inside. Or you could think of it as this is a second cave inside of a cave. Um, we can only have one cave. So all of the wall cells have to connect to the edge of the grid somehow. They don't all have to connect to each other. You can have walls there and more walls over here and another wall up here, and that's okay. But all the walls have to touch the edge of the grid somehow. Um, and so then the other thing to know is that these clues, all the numbers are your clues. Um, the numbers all are inside of the cave. So you could actually go through and mark them all as green to start if you wanted to. Um, but they tell you how many cave cells that cell sees horizontally and vertically, including itself. So um, for example, this five right here you could have that. It would be one, two, three, four, five. It would see five cells um, inside the cave. Now, if you had walls right here, it could be one, two, three, four, five. It could be like that, and it would see five. One, two, three, four, five, including itself, but you don't double count itself. So, um, and, and you take a cell in the middle like this six, and you could have, for example, something like this would work one, two, three, four vertically, and then five and six horizontally. Um, you can't have more than that. You couldn't have this. That would be seven. Um, it's, it's exactly that number. Um, so that is the basics of cave puzzles. Um, I'm going to solve this one. I will include a link to it uh, in the description of the video if you want to try it out for yourself. Um, but going to solve this one and hopefully that will help um, give you some ideas about how to go about doing this puzzle. Um, so where to start with a cave puzzle? Well the first thing I like to do is make sure I know how big the grid is. So this one is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 by 10. They're usually square but they don't have to be. Um, 10 by 10 and the reason that's helpful is because something like this 11 here, the big clues are the ones that I start with. Um, this 11, if you think about it, so the 11 itself is green. You can also go through and mark all of the numbers green because they all have to be part of the cave, but you don't necessarily have to do that to start. All right, so this 11. Let's imagine that it used all of the cells vertically. That would be 10 cells that it could possibly have vertically. And it can't have one to the right, so it has to have at least one to the left. Because even if you fill in all of these, it's only 10. So it has to have at least one there. So we don't know if it has more. I mean, it could have a whole bunch of these. We don't know. But it has to have at least one. So we can go ahead and mark that one. Um, 
there aren't any other real big ones. You know, if we had a, a 15 right here, for example, you'd know 10 and you could do 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. You could do something like that. Um, and so the idea is to look at where, you know, it has to have at least one this way or at least two this way or things like that. Now, we can actually go further than that on this one because we were imagining that the 11 had all of these vertical over here. But actually, that's not possible because of this 2 right here. Because if this 2 connects down, this 2 now sees 1, 2, 3, 4 cells. And it can't see 4 cells, it can only see 2. So this one right here actually has to be a wall or a not cave cell, however you want to look at it. Um, so the 11 now can only have a maximum of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 vertically here. So then we can go 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 minimum. Could have more. And then actually if we look down here, this 4 can't connect to the 11 because now the 4 would be seeing 5. So the most the 11 can do is go down one more. So that's 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So it has to have at least that many. Now it's seeing 10 cells, nine horizontally, including itself, and then this one below it. So it's gonna have either this one or this one, but not both. We don't know which one yet, but. All right, so now this has created this pattern here that um, is very important in cave puzzles. So we know that you have to have one cave. All the green cells have to be connected, but you also can only have one cave. You can't have, uh, you know, a cave with black cells in between like this. You can't do something like this because you have a cave inside of a cave, essentially. So all of your black cells have to connect to the edge of the grid. So there's this checkerboard pattern thing that crops up. So you'll notice if we put a black here, this creates sort of a checkerboard here with the, the blacks diagonally and the greens diagonally. Now, let's, um, let's think about what happens if we do this. This green 2 has to connect somehow with the rest of the cave. The only way it can do that is to come somehow around this way. Now, we don't know, you know exactly where it would connect. It could come up here and around. It could do a lot of things. But ultimately, it's going to loop around and back to this area somehow, which is going to trap that black cell. There's no possible way for this black cell to get to the edge of the grid, whether it was, you know, real winding around, whatever it is. Somewhere it's going to connect to the grid and this green can't connect or the green will connect and the black can't get to the edge of the grid. And this is going to be true anywhere you have um, a checkerboard pattern. So if we had over here this type of situation. You've got the exact same thing. This this green, somehow these greens have to connect. Um, and it doesn't even matter if it's at the edge of the grid. If you had uh, right here, same problem. This green here is going to have to connect around this way, which would trap this black, or it's going to have to connect around this way, which would trap, trap this black. So whether or not that's completely clear it's it's definitely hard to wrap your head around at first i think um just you can take it as given that this pattern is is a no-no you can't have a checkerboard pattern and so what that means is we can put a green cell right there now the two is seeing two greens so we got to do that now what can we do next well, this four is seeing three, but we don't really know which one it's going to have up here. So let's see, what else can we look at? Well, we can do the same kind of thing with this nine that we did with the 11, right? It can only have at most three vertically. So we can do four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It has to have at least that. It could have one more. We don't know yet. And now the four sees one, two, three, four. So we can put walls uh, either ends because that one can't extend any farther or it would see five and now we've created another checkerboard pattern here if we put a green there it's gonna break things so that has to be black um let's see what else can we do well we know the four 
can't connect up here because that would create five cells that the four would see. So we can have at most one plus itself is two. So we have to have at least two this direction. The six, you can do the same kind of thing. There's two here vertically. It can have at most one more to the side over here. So that would be three. So it has to have at least three this way. Um, let's see, this nine here. Um, so we obviously can't do this because then you would have five cells connected with the four. So the most this nine can get horizontally is four, right? If we went this way, it could have four. If we went this way, it could only have three. So four is the most it could get horizontally. So it's going to have to have five, six, seven, eight, nine vertically. Um, and now look at this five up here. If we connect the nine to the five, the five is going to have way too many cells. So that's the farthest that nine can go. So it has to stop at a wall there. Now we have one, two, three, four, five, six. It needs three more. If we were to go to the left, we could only get two. That would be eight. So we would have to have one more this way. So we can put that one in, which now connects it to the four. And that four prevents this from connecting across to the five. So now we can do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The ninth one is going to have to come from right there because we don't have any other options. Put the blacks there because we've got all of our nine. We've also got all of our four here. So we can put a black one there. And now we've got an interesting thing here. This black cell that I just put in right here has to connect to the edge of the grid somehow. Um, and the only way it can do that is through this area here. And so it could go directly up and across. It could come this way. We don't really know what happens over here, but where, however it goes, it's got to come down this hallway here, essentially, to get to the edge of the grid. So we can fill all of those in. And now this has to continue on at least one more. This one we don't necessarily know for sure yet. It doesn't have to be black because we've connected to the edge of the grid. These two could be green or black. But now we can look over here at this one and we know because of the six and the four both that this has to be a green because the six sees five right now and the four sees three. So that's going to be a green. All right. Um, and what else can we do? This five can't go to the right, it can't go down or left, so we got to do all five of them up. One, two, three, four, five, and we can put a black one there. Um, now, we don't know yet what's in here. These could be green or black at this point, as could these. So we'll just have to carry on and see what we can figure out. Ah, this nine. One, two, so we've got one above it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine which puts a black one here and now we've got the same situation this black has to connect to the edge of the grid and it's got greens on three sides so it's going to have to get out via this um, hallway here so that fills those in now let's see what can we do next well we can ah, look at this three if it goes this way to connect there will be four cells there three can't see four cells so that one can't be a green and now we've got our checkerboard pattern again here. We can't put a green here, we'll create the checkerboard. So this has to be a black. Um, and now this three, since it can't go over, it's got to get all three of its cells vertically. Now if we go down, we can only have two and we'd have to have one more up, which would create four. So it's going to have to just go up. That gives it all three. Black goes there. And now this three at the top also sees three. So we get a black cell right there. And now we have kind of the opposite problem of what we had with these hallway situations down here. Now these three green cells here are sort of uh, an island. If we put a black there, that's going to be separate. And you can't have two caves. You can only have one cave. Um, so the green has to connect to the other green somehow. And the only way it's going to be able to do that is to come through this little hallway, channel, whatever you want to call it here. So those are going to connect. So now we've got, let's see, we've got three for the five. It can get 
one more up here potentially maybe at most so that would be four the max it can get there is four so it's gonna have to have at least this one and now the five sees four cells so it's gonna either have this one or this one um, don't think we know for sure which one yet let's see what can we do now ah so this three now sees two cells itself and the one below it so if we connect it across here you'll have four can't have four so they can't connect through there so these are going to be cut off and now let's go back to this five we said it either had to have one here or here well imagine we put the fifth cell right there that would put a black right there because our five would be done <clears throat> and that would create a checkerboard pattern and we can't have the checkerboard so we can't extend the green there because that would cause a black which would create the checkerboard so that is black our fifth cell is up there and now let's see what can we do next well we can look at the six and we can see there's a maximum of four vertically plus one over here it would be five so it's going to have to have at least this cell um let's see the eight only has three horizontally so even if we took both of these up here that would be five it would have to have six seven uh now we've connected down here so now we've got three four five six seven already so it can only have one more um either here or here uh, ah the six now has six one two three four five six so we can put black cells on all the edges there because we can't extend the six and now we've got a checkerboard thing here we need to avoid we can't put a green there let's put a black like that uh, and now this three if it extends down it's gonna have way too many cells so that's got to be a black um, let's see what else can we do we've got oh the three here can't we can't go this way because it'll have too many so that's going to be a black which means the three has to extend up here to get its third cell this black has to get to the edge of the grid so it can only go that way the eight now has three four five six seven it needs one more that makes it eight puts a black cell right there and now we've got a similar thing that we had over here with the greens with these greens these the three and the four up here need to connect to the rest of the cave somehow we can't close this off or we will have two separate caves so it's going to have to connect across here that makes four for the blacks or four, four for the um, four greens for the four already so we can do that the three needs to have a third cell right down here we've got a checkerboard situation and these last two um if you think about it they can't be green because we would have a separate cave there so these are just going to have to be black to fill in. And it pops up and says, complete. Good job. Um, so if you get the right solution, it'll jump up and tell you complete with a little pop-up window. If at some point along the way you've got some of it done and you want to hit check, you can do that. It'll tell you what the problems are. Um, some shaded cells are not connected to the outside. Yep, some shaded cells. You can do check. The unshaded cells are divided. You've got this, uh, the opposite problem here. You've got the the greens cut off um, cell containing a clue number sees a different number of cells so it'll tell you kind of what you're do what you've got wrong um, but that is how you do a cave puzzle um, I hope you enjoy today's cave puzzle and I'll see you tomorrow